Hello and welcome to Weathersnap. I'm Aidan McGiven. It's hard to believe this time last year the UK hit 40 Celsius for the first time on record. This week, on the anniversary of that record breaker, some places were more than 20 Celsius lower. Why are the weather patterns for this July so different? And at the same time, why are they so similar? Yet again, this July, extreme heat has made the news, this time further south across Europe and elsewhere across the globe. To put this July's extraordinary highs and lows around the Northern Hemisphere into context, I'm joined now by Dan Rudman, Deputy Chief Meteorologist from the Met Office Global Guidance Unit. Dan, let's start with the various heat waves around the world and some notable records that have been broken. Yeah, we've got several simultaneous heat waves around the Northern Hemisphere at the moment. The Northern Hemisphere obviously being in the summer period. So we have a heat wave in North America. We have the heat wave in Europe, which we've been hearing about on the news. And also there's a heat wave in Southern Asia. And they're all connected to the larger global circulation. And people have probably heard mention of the jet stream, which is higher up in the atmosphere. And that's just part of this interconnected system. So some of the records we've seen, I mean, across Europe, Uh, Greece, eastern Spain, Sardinia, Sicily, southern Italy, they've all seen temperatures around 45 or above 45 at the start of this week. And that's widely kind of 10 to 12 degrees higher than the normal average. And then in the rest of the world, China quite famously saw the the record of 52.2 degrees a couple of days ago. And Phoenix uh, in the USA in Death Valley, that's recorded its longest ever streak of days with maximum temperatures above 110 Fahrenheit. That's 43 Celsius. And that heat wave in the States is ongoing still at the moment. The extraordinary longevity of these heat waves, although these are parts of the world where we expect hot weather in July, it's the fact that these heat waves have been persisting and effectively intensifying. And you mentioned the jet stream a moment ago. What kind of shape is the jet stream in at the moment that is allowing these heat waves to persist? Well, the jet stream wiggles its way around the world and that the size of those wiggles determine how fast things move around or how fast our weather systems move around the world at the moment. And the shape it's got at the moment is it's just inhibiting any movement. So the pattern tends to get stuck and we get these broad kind of sweeping peaks and troughs in the jet stream. Now, the jet stream is a little bit further south uh, around the UK. And that means that we are to the north of the jet stream. Uh, so, so not experiencing these heat waves, but in the south, uh, the the shape of the or the curve in the jet stream has just held the high pressure system over Europe and the other parts of the world I was speaking about earlier, and uh, it's just got stuck in a bit of a rut and it's prevented those systems from moving on. Yeah, it's interesting because this time last year, I remember talking about a very amplified or very wriggly jet stream leading to some prolonged heat waves in various parts of the world. Now, of course, we ourselves were affected by one of those prolonged heat waves and that intense heat led to the 40 Celsius record. And this year, although it seems like it's very, very different for the UK, actually, in terms of the globe itself, it's just a case of these heat waves are in slightly different places. The UK is on the different side of the jet stream. That's exactly right. And this amplified pattern that the big kind of wiggles and waves in the jet stream are just a little bit further to the west, sort of in the vicinity of the UK and out over the Atlantic. And that means that all the warmer air is being held either over the other side of the Atlantic or to the south of us, whereas last year, the wiggles, the waves were in a slightly different place and that held the warmer air over ourselves and allowed temperatures over the UK to rise. So for Death Valley, for the Mediterranean, for South Asia, is there any relief in sight? Will these weather patterns become unstuck? Well, it's quite a slow moving picture, but yeah, there is some relief in sight. I mean, not so much for the USA. There's probably going to be a a slight relaxing of that over the next couple of days, but the heat might spread back in again um, over southern China and southern Asia, probably past its peak now and we'll start to see temperatures come down slowly. Over Europe, over southern Europe, there's signs now that the the system causing that heat wave, the high pressure system, is drifting slowly to the east. So we'll see the peaks of those temperatures transfer. We've already seen the hottest weather past its peak in Spain. But those peaks will transfer eastwards and start to affect Greece more and then into Turkey before they dissipate over the next couple of weeks. So there is a sign that things will tend to settle back down towards normal, but it's a slow moving system and it will take its time to move out of the way. And finally, Dan, when you get these heat waves, you often get associated thunderstorms, don't you? Are we seeing that sort of thing take place around the world? 
Yes, yes, we are. So very notably in Midwest of the USA, there's some severe thunderstorms expected there, things like large hail and tornadoes and all the things that they do bigger over there than ourselves. But also in Europe, there are some places, Central and Eastern Europe, really from Switzerland through to Romania. And that's going to start seeing some quite intense thunderstorms as well with frequent lightning, large hail, gusty winds. And we tend to get this more extreme or more active weather where we get these large differences in temperature. And so it's where the colder air is is pushing into that source of heat, that warmer air, that we start seeing these thunderstorms and this more active weather systems. Well, plenty going on. And uh, thank you for keeping us updated, Dan. That's Dan Rudman, Deputy Chief Meteorologist from the Met Office Global Guidance Unit. Of course, a lot of people will be grateful that the UK avoided the extreme heat this July compared with elsewhere in Europe. But last Wednesday, the 19th of July, it was the anniversary of the highest ever recorded UK temperature, 40.3 Celsius, which was recorded at Coningsby in Lincolnshire. To mark the anniversary, we've recorded a special edition of Weather Snap, in which Doug McNeil talks to climate scientist Mark McCarthy about the significance of last year's truly exceptional heat. Were you working on the day that this record was set? You were looking out for records. How fast are these records coming in? The Met Office maintain and run a network of weather stations across the country. Several hundred of those are automated, and that means that they're providing data and information to Met Office HQ on a minute by minute basis through the day. And so the temperatures rose very rapidly through that day such that uh, records were being broken before noon. And this was quite remarkable and a sort of indicator of how far records were being broken. So that's a heatwave special presented by Doug McNeil, which will be available on our SoundCloud and YouTube channels from tomorrow, which you can enjoy listening to curled up on the sofa whilst it's raining outside. Yep, a soggy weekend to come for many of us. Here's the UK outlook. Low pressure approaches the UK from the northwest this weekend, bringing a series of weather fronts, resulting in a series of bouts of wet and breezy weather. Now, for much of England, Wales, southern and central Scotland, as well as Northern Ireland, spells of rain are expected throughout Saturday, a lot of cloud cover, and the wettest weather will be over western hills, especially North Wales. But it won't be raining everywhere all the time. There will be some gaps in the rainfall. So it's rain on and off. And of course, you can keep track of that rainfall using the Met Office app. For northern Scotland, it will be drier. It will be brighter as well, one or two showers. But it's northern Scotland where the best of any sunny spells will prevail on Saturday. And probably the highest temperatures, 18 so it'll be 19 Celsius in that sunshine towards the northwest of Scotland. Elsewhere across the UK, temperatures rather suppressed into the mid, perhaps high teens under the rainfall. And it will be breezy, especially along the English Channel. Now, the main bands of rain push through on Saturday night, but one area of wet weather sticks across central and southern Scotland, perhaps extending at times into northern England and northern Ireland during Sunday. Elsewhere, it's a mixture of bright spells and showers. Some of those showers will be prolonged at times in the far southeast of England, perhaps extending into London. But across central parts, across much of the rest of England and Wales, there will be some sunny spells in between the showers. And as a result, it will feel a little warmer with temperatures into the low 20s. Into Monday, the bands of rain sink south across the country, turning to showers as they clear away in between some sunny spells. And Tuesday looks like a fine day for many, a brief ridge of high pressure with some sunshine before another low turns up around the middle of next week. So love it or hate it, we can expect more of the same for the rest of July. Before we go, how did last week shape up in terms of observation records? Here with last week's highs and lows, Ollie Claydon. Here are your UK weather extremes for the week beginning 10th of July. The highest temperature was recorded on Monday the 10th of July in Marham, Norfolk, with a high of 26.4 Celsius. The coldest night was in the early hours of Thursday when Catesbridge in County Down dipped to 3.2 degrees. The wettest place was Capelcurig in North Wales on Saturday when there was 76.6 millimetres of rainfall. Finally, the sunniest spots were Jersey on Monday and Shap in Cumbria on Thursday, both with 12.3 hours of sunshine. Thanks, Ollie. Well, that's it for Weather Snap. I'm Aidan McGiven. Thank you for listening.
another great weather snap, Claire. Thank you so much for listening. And don't forget to hit subscribe. Then you catch all of our daily weathers on YouTube as well. And if podcasts are your thing, check out our Met Office podcast channel. Lots of information, lots of stories there. And we'll see you again next week.